Well, in America today, we are getting closer to fully exposing the greatest con and cover-up in the history of this country. It involves our banks, the Federal Reserve, our Congress, and of course, you and me. First, though, think of the Fed as the godfather in this con. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. And this court side, enjoy yourself. The role of the Godfather, played by former Fed Chief Alan Greenspan, who appeared before the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission this morning, denying that he ever knew what he helped perpetrate. The notion that uh, we in any way uh, favored any of them or basically were influenced with respect to policy by what they said, other than the facts they gave us, which we always evaluated, uh, I saw no evidence of that in my tenure. And he may not have had favorite among the banks because Greenspan was working for all of the banks against you. The bankers, of course, the unrepentant con men being supported by the Federal Reserve. She picked him clean. He never missed him. Remember that sting experience, how good you felt. So good getting that money for free, getting away with it. Here's how the con went down. The bankers were operating under an implicit guarantee from the godfather, the Federal Reserve, in the form of guaranteed low interest rates, guaranteed cheap money exclusively for the con men. Then Chairman Greenspan, the godfather, would agree to hold those rates, but let's say 2% for as far as the eye could see. The banks, or bankers, the con men, would borrow that money from the Federal Reserve, let's say 2%, and then turn around and lend it back to you at, let's say, 6%. That encouraged the patsies, you and me, to be drawn into the con because 6% looks like a pretty low rate. Low rates for houses, low rates for cars. Heck, you can join a health club, pay, make that on payments, they'll turn that into bonds, and of course, promises of a higher than average return for those managing teachers and policemen and judges pension funds that are buying into the con as well. And here exactly is where the con comes in. As you and I both know, the banks had no money. They were getting it from the Federal Reserve, which is us. It's funny money. They had no capital to back up their lending. But that did not matter because they also had no risk in the lending. If the lending paid off, they win. And they won big when they did that because they did it with leverage. Top Manhattan executives alone paid themselves $121 billion in bonuses over the first part of the decade. Now, mind you, when the bank loans failed, they knew they were too big to fail. So the rest of us, you and me, would have to bail them out. The ignorant electorate, if you will. The patsies, who had no idea, and really still don't, understand how badly they are being conned by our government and our banks. Once the banks, however, realized there was no losing, the question was, how do we make the con bigger? How do we get more money through this crazy machine so we can get richer? The question, or the answer, I should say, is simple. Make more loans, more credit card loans. Think of all the credit card applications that were sent to you over the past 10 years. More car loans. It's the reason General Motors went upside down. It wasn't the cars. It was because they were running a financing scheme. Home loans, you know the narrative. So the people most hurt by this con, the home buyers, the cops, the teachers, pensioners who were suckered in by the bait of low credit and high returns in exchange for buying worthless toxic assets manufactured by the bankers. That's why your pension fund was wiped out. That's why the interest rate on your savings to this day remains around zero. If you're a retiree, you know what I'm talking about. It's also why you're now drowning in a mortgage on a house that's worth, worth far less than you owe because the bankers were happy to lend you money they did not have to drive up the price of that house because they knew the more loans the better, but no downside for them. So what's next? Higher taxes for us, higher interest rates for us to pay for the bailouts while our government that was theoretically elected by us refuses to recover the stolen money by the con men or fix the system that allows them to continue to perpetrate the con against you and me. The current financial reform legislation uh, proposed by our government would give the godfather, the Federal Reserve in this case, even more power to regulate the game 
The con men, represented by the Wall Street bankers, of course, giving our Congress a cut of the action. $344 million so far lobbying against the bill, second only to health care. And we saw how well it worked out for special interest on health care. Home run, they got a guaranteed customer base with no reform. I'm sure the bankers will do pretty well as well. All this, of course, while assuring our lawmakers, many of whom do not even understand how the con works in the first place, that the financial crisis has been fixed, of course, with an infinite supply of your money. After all, just check out stocks over the past year. We are back over 10,000 on the Dow, thanks to that blank check from the Federal Reserve. So now, as we finally head towards Congress debating financial reform in our country, the question must be asked, does it make sense for our government to give more power to a Federal Reserve and banker con men who unrepentantly cause this crisis and make money at your expense on the pension side and on the credit side? That's the current plan. Give them more power. Joining us now, Congressman Alan Grayson, Democrat from Florida, who sponsored the audit the Fed bill with Ron Paul. Congressman, pleasure to see you again. And on the phone, Bill Fleckenstein, president of Fleckenstein Capital, and more importantly, author of Irrational Exuberance, the Greenspan Bubble. Bill does an exceptional job of explaining exactly how the godfather, uh, Alan Greenspan, allowed the banks to perpetrate this con. And in fact, uh, Bill profited uh, rather handsomely betting against the con, knowing that it was a bubble. Uh, I know, Congressman Grayson, that you understand more or less everything that I just said and then some. Uh, and are likely more frustrated than I am at our Congress's unwillingness to actually acknowledge or understand the con or address it. Why do you think it has been so difficult and continues to be difficult for anybody in our Congress to really deal with this? Well, I have the benefit of having worked as an economist for four years before I was elected to Congress, and that does give me some insight into how all this works. I think a lot of people on Capitol Hill simply don't understand how this works the way you just described it. Clearly, they should be listening to your show. If you were to... If you don't understand that the bank's incentive is to lend as